Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that. And also, if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all. Sadly, it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2023 related video here on my channel, and today I'm going to be filming another What We Know So Far video, where I go through... Pretty much everything we, as fans, know about the upcoming edition of a Eurovision Song Contest. Yesterday, at the time of recording this video you're watching now, I made a brief video where I went through what was, at the time, breaking news, which I saw on the TV. It came upon my screen that the UK would be stepping in and hosting the 2023 edition, the 67th edition, of the Eurovision Song Contest in a show of solidarity with Ukraine. As we all know, I don't really need to go through this again, but I will, we all know that Ukraine can't host next year's contest, despite winning the ESC for a third time earlier this year in Turin because of the ongoing invasion. Even if that ended soon, the whole process of sort of getting yourselves back on your feet and the infrastructure and all of that business, that's going to take such a long time anyway. Hosting Eurovision is such a daunting prospect for any broadcaster, I would say, and it's just impossible, perhaps, I suppose, for Ukraine to stage such an extraordinary show. So the UK, a safe pair of hands, a safer pair of hands at this moment in time, perhaps, uh, will be doing it in cooperation with the Ukrainian broadcaster. And within the next week or so, there's going to be a bidding process launched, which will see the EBU and the BBC work together, and I'm sure various members of the EBU, certain people and what have you, will travel to the cities that launch a bid, and some cities have already said they will be launching a bid, and then hopefully by, I don't know, mid-September or the end of September, we will find out exactly where in the UK the upcoming ESC will be staged. I am already rambling for the ages once again. This is nothing new, this is nothing new on my channel. I'm knocking my headphones flying. It's a right mess. Let's get straight into this then, ladies and gentlemen. So, I've got some information here in front of me as well. It says that uh, Ukraine unable to meet the demands of hosting the event due to security concerns. That's the main one. There was a statement by the EBU several weeks ago, and then there was another one where they essentially said that they discussed with security experts about the contest being staged in Ukraine next May, but that the threat of injury, pretty much, was high. Long story short, would people really want to travel to Ukraine anyway, especially if the invasion is still ongoing next spring? I don't think so. I would not feel comfortable doing it, and I'm not sure a lot of other Eurovision fans would be as well. So it's in the UK who finished second. It's going to be organised by the EBU, the BBC, on behalf of UAPBC. And of course there will be two semi-finals and a final. This will be a record ninth time that the UK hosts the contest, having last done so in Birmingham in 1998. As I said in my last video, <coughs> excuse me, I was way too young. Uh, in 1998 to have any real concept of music that I enjoyed, uh, Eurovision, absolutely no idea that it existed, and I don't really remember anything at all about Eurovision 1998 being on the news, I don't remember seeing it on TV or anything like that. Obviously, I am now much older and much more aware of Eurovision, and it's so exciting. I said this in yesterday's video, I mean... Yes, we didn't win, uh, but to have the contest here, something that I'm so passionate about, something that I really care about, it's extraordinary. I'm not going to go as far to say that it doesn't feel real. I, 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 you know, I fully accept the fact that it's happening, but it's still a bit bizarre because it seems so far-fetched almost. It's, it's almost as if England won the World Cup, which has happened before, not in my lifetime, but it's happened before. If England were to win the World Cup later in the year, it would just feel so odd and so out of character almost. <laughs> you know, the UK, England winning the football? Never. We're only good at cycling and swimming. <laughs> you know, it would feel so bizarre to me. Anyway, what a ramble. Let's see what it says here. I don't need to go through the statements that have been released within the past couple of days. 
Our soon-to-be ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he put something out on Twitter saying that, you know, it would be a show of solidarity, something along those lines. Loads of cities have expressed an interest. Let's go through these briefly. I did in a previous video, but more cities want to join in. So we've got Aberdeen. It could be in Aberdeen. Uh, it's actually one of the biggest venues in the UK, I believe. But in all honesty, I think Aberdeen doesn't stand much of a chance here. Belfast, it would be great to have it in Northern Ireland, but I don't see them getting selected. Birmingham has two venues, although I think they are preferring one over the other. Could be Birmingham. They are staging the Commonwealth Games, which launches this week. Will they get Eurovision next year as well? I don't know. They've done it before, including most recently in the UK. I don't know. Brighton, highly doubtful. Bristol, I don't think the arena is going to be built in time. Cardiff. Cheryl Baker, the lead singer of 1981 UK winners Bucks Fizz, has come out today and said that she supports a Cardiff bid and would be supporting Cardiff uh, with that bid, hoping that they would get selected to host ESC 2023. The Millennium Stadium, which is a huge stadium used for rugby and football, um, it does have a roof. That's working in its favour. And Eurovision has never been in Wales. So uh, certainly I think Cardiff is in with a fairly decent shot here. Edinburgh uh, has hosted Eurovision before, but both venues are very small. Glasgow has the Hydro, which is the hot favourite. I've got to be honest with you, I don't really know why. Because I think there's better venues in the UK myself. But it's never been in Glasgow. It was the favourite even before the UK sort of was mooted uh, more properly, I suppose, as the host of the 2023 contest. Uh, it looks great. It lights up on the outside. There's other buildings nearby, I believe, that could host, you know, the press centre and things like that. Yeah, the only problem really that I have with Glasgow perhaps winning this bid, and they have officially announced that they will bid for this, is that it is so far away from where I live. Fantastic. It couldn't be further away if it tried. <laughs> but never mind. Then we have Leeds. No. Liverpool, possibly, but I doubt it. London has three venues listed here. The O2 I've been to is great. Ready-made for Eurovision. But I think the BBC want more events to be staged outside of London. Manchester I'll talk about in a minute. Nottingham, doubtful, although that's not far from me. Newcastle, doubtful. Sheffield, wouldn't mind but doubtful. Sunderland, no chance as far as I'm concerned. And Wolverhampton, also no chance. It lists the Wolverhampton Civic Hall here. <coughs> I'm sorry? That is tiny. No, 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 no. Wolverhampton's pretty much part of Birmingham, if you didn't know. Anyway, Manchester is the hot favourite with me. I'll tell you why. The AO Arena is the second largest indoor arena in Europe. The contest has never been staged in Manchester. It's right next to a train station. There's an airport in Manchester. Manchester has a rich cultural scene, two major football clubs. And although, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, you know, the incident a couple of years ago with the Ariana Grande concert and loads of people were killed and injured, that was very tragic indeed. Although it's been a few years since that, this could be an opportunity for Manchester and particularly the musical scene in Manchester, which is very rich, it's an opportunity to say, we are back, we mean business, we are blossoming, it's all absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm not just saying I want it to be in Manchester because it's nearer than Glasgow. I think Manchester's arena is arguably stronger. I don't know, that's just me. Um, certainly, I would be very surprised if Manchester is not one of the last three or two cities in contention here. Plus... Uh, one of the BBC's big headquarters is in Salford, which is right next door to Manchester. So, you know, if they're working on the contest, it's not that far away geographically at all. Anyway, my God, I'm rambling. Bear with me. As of the 19th of July, a few days ago, 21 countries have publicly confirmed their intentions to participate. They include, let's go through this, Albania. This December, FIC will happen once again. 
Austria, no doubt internal. Belgium, no doubt internal. Although there are rumours that a national final could be back. Cyprus, they were going to have a national final, but I believe that's been pushed back to 2024. And next year it will be an internal selection again, I believe. Denmark, it'll be DMGP next spring. Finland, UMK next February. Greece, internal. Israel, now, I'll actually leave Israel for a moment. Uh, the Netherlands, internal. Norway, that'll be MGP next February. Poland, internal, no doubt. San Marino are using their same national final format. Details are going to be announced soon. Serbia, no doubt their national final will return. Sweden, Melfest, the final will be on the 11th of March. And at some point we'll find out which cities Melfest will be going to. Because it's been quite a while since it did its usual travel around the country. And Switzerland, they will no doubt have an internal selection too. As for the automatic finalists, including Ukraine, and rightly so, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Ukraine and the UK, we know San Remo will once again take place in early February. The final will be on February the 11th. And Spain's Benidorm Fest, which is slightly larger than the uh, rebooted version earlier this year, that will be on February the 4th. Now, Israel did announce their representative not so long ago. Uh, instead of using the X Factor Israel, they just went internal. They had a list of names and Noah Kirel came out on top. Now, yes, here we are. This is a real coup because Noah, gorgeous woman, born in 2001, uh, she is pretty much the biggest singer in Israel. She's had a lot of success. Her music videos get millions of views. She's won MTV European Music Awards. She is a big, big name. But then, pretty much a day later, she came out and said, actually, I haven't said yes yet. So we still don't know who's representing Israel. It looks like it could be Noah Kivel, or it could be somebody else. But like I said, if it is her, that's a real signal of intent, I would say, because she's such a big homegrown star. Um, as for countries that won't be involved, Andorra, I'm absolutely disappointed by this because uh, Susan Georgi, who represented Andorra in 2009, she was working with um, the Andorran broadcaster, I believe, and she spoke with the Andorran prime minister. It seems as though that was a complete waste of time. I think it's for financial reasons more than anything else. But look, if San Marino can qualify for a Eurovision final, Andorra can as well. You know, little countries can do wonders at the contest but unfortunately it says here the content manager of rtva confirmed that andorra is unlikely to return in the short or medium term i'm very disappointed by this i really am uh, then we have croatia they'll be back uh, monaco won't be back because the new tv station's launch has been delayed so it doesn't look like they're going to be coming back. But 2024, possibly. Uh, North Macedonia, they were going to withdraw because of that absolutely ludicrous flag incident with Andrea earlier this year in Turin. Uh, but no doubt they'll return and that will all be brushed to one side. Romania, they were threatening to withdraw even though they got their best result for years earlier this year. They had a referendum. I think most people said, yes, we want to keep participating. So... No doubt Romania will be involved. And Slovakia. They do have a new director general of RTVS. But whether that makes any difference or not, I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, we won't have Luxembourg. Highly doubtful. Turkey, who knows? I doubt it. And then Kosovo, who are looking to gain EBU membership. This seems to happen every year. They never gain it, and therefore they never debut. Now... There is an article here that I want to briefly mention as well. Um, Hugh Edwards. Now, if you're in the UK, you'll know who this man is. He is a very well-established, well-respected newsreader here in the UK. And he is Welsh, is he not? So he'll definitely be behind a Cardiff bid. Uh, it says here, this is on the Weeby Blogs website, um, Hugh Edwards is keen to host Eurovision 2023. Um, he regularly steers intense election coverage. I have to say, whenever he is presenting the news, and he presents major events as well, I, th I think he presented Prince Philip's funeral, things like that, he's the man for the big job. But my God, he talks so slowly sometimes. 
and stumbles over his words. Oh, man. Anyway, he is a pretty solid pair of hands. He regularly steers intense election coverage and steadies the nation with his soothing voice and avuncular aura. And now BBC News presenter and Welsh icon Hugh Edwards has made it clear he's ready for another challenge. Uh, he also presents uh, the BBC News at 10. Um, and uh, this here, he put something up on Twitter responding to Grant Tucker, uh, saying that the contest should be in Cardiff. Um, I think Cardiff is in with a very good chance, I really do. Do not rule out Wales staging the competition. Um, he's warm and personal. And blah, blah, blah. He's a silver fox, it says here. He is 60 years of age, so he would be one of the oldest individuals to host the contest ever, I would assume. Uh, but definitely he is, like I said, a safe pair of hands. Uh, other favourites include Graham Norton, of course, Mr. Reliable. Um, not from the UK. He's actually Irish, but there we are. Um, Davina McCall, who's a pretty good TV presenter as well. She's one of the favourites. Rylan, who does semi-final coverage, he's pretty good. You'd be able to spot his teeth away from a mile. Uh, and Mel Giedrich, who has presented, um, co-presented the semi-finals here on the BBC as well. AJ Ododu, who did the UK points in Turin. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of names, absolutely. And I don't want to ramble, but there we are. Um, there's not much else to say. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Links in the description to my other social media pages, including the Instagram page, which is Eurovision-related, that I am co-running with a friend of mine. We're hoping to get another post up later today, all being well. But, shall we finish this video by having a little bit of a chuckle? I think we will. How long is this video? Oh, long enough. I am on the BBC News Facebook page, and I'm looking at the post where it says the contest will be in the UK. Oh, shall we have a look at some of the comments? I think we shall. Lee Morris says, Let's get our priorities right. Sort out the NHS, schools, infrastructure, cost of living, environment and climate change issues first. Then maybe we can sing a few daft songs. Now, all of those things he's mentioned, they are very important. But if you think the UK is sorting out any of those things anytime soon, you are sorely mistaken. You'll be waiting many lifetimes before any of those are sorted in a way that makes people feel a lot happier than they currently are. So that comment... Psh, um, Paul Morgan... The BBC announced this as if it's good news, and that TV taxpayers should be grateful. But it's utter gash, and a waste of money in my opinion, he says, without actually knowing how much money it costs. And probably many others too. Uh, this is the thing, right? As much as a lot of people are very excited about Eurovision coming to the UK, they don't like the fact that they have to pay to watch the BBC. That's the thing. Forget Eurovision. It's the licence fee. Now, let's see what some of the replies say. Um, a wonderful cultural event. Um, a lot of people want to support Ukraine, and this is doing exactly that. Keep watching Bake Off. Uh, what else have we got here? Some, a few people are saying fantastic news. How on earth can we afford this? We are broke. Uh, yes, it's a very expensive thing to stage, but hey, look how much the Commonwealth Games is costing. And think of the tourists as well. You're going to get back so much money through the tourism. Um, could it not be joint hosted, a UK location with Ukraine presenters, says Stephen Stringer. You might be onto something there, Stephen. Everyone will be stuck at passport checks. <laughs> Possibly. Um, wherever it's held... Ah, this is a great point. Wherever it's held, I can guarantee the unions will plan strikes to disrupt it. Right now, strikes are happening left, right and centre. Nobody wants to drive a train. Uh, airports are really messy. The ports on the south coast, chaos. I wouldn't be surprised if the unions tried and disrupted this as well. Um, what else have we got here? Has to be in Belfast. Um, <laughs> we can afford it, right? I mean, it's not like the NHS need any money. The NHS 
is a wonderful thing. They're not getting any money anytime soon, let me tell you. Not with this government, not with the next government. Another waste of money coming our way then. Normally we get zero points. That should speak volumes. Did you did you see our result this year, Amy Revel? Or did you watch something else? Um, what else have we got here? Our country is the equivalent of someone on benefits blowing their money on crack. Wow. Uh, more wasted money the country cannot afford. It should be held in Cardiff. It should be held in Bradford. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, UK was the real winner anyway. More money for taxpayers to find. I'm sorry. I didn't get a letter in the post today saying, uh, just so you know, uh, this much money that you have. Yeah, it's got to go to hosting Eurovision next year. No, that's not going to happen. An absolute waste of money. Um, are they trying to get back into the EU? Who's paying for it? Votes are all rigged. Also hosting Brexit, not just next year, but forever. We're not in Europe anymore. Uh, Edinburgh is twinned with Key. There's your host city. Yeah, but Edinburgh doesn't have a good enough venue. Anyway, what a massive ramble. And I'm not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it just gets even more thrilling. A couple of newspaper articles here. You might like this one. It's only brief. But there's a great line here. Um, this is by Noah Hoffman. And it says, Ukraine's Kalush Orchestra were crowned winners in May's contest as Europe sent an all-singing, all-dancing, two-finger salute to Vladimir Putin. Hmm, I see. Families should fly yellow and blue bunting alongside our Union flag in a celebration of the bond between our two nations. Apparently Boris said that, did he? We'll see. Um, blah, blah, blah. There's a picture of Sam Ryder. Now, where's the other article? Ah, it's in here, isn't it? Just bear with me. A much bigger article in this newspaper. Here we are. Da, 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 da. This is by Benjamin Butterworth. Oh, there you go. That's the article. Back to front. Uh, the UK will host next year... Uh, the UK became the presumptive replacement after TikTok star Sam Ryder came second. The best British result for two decades. It is not yet known which UK city will host the 67th Eurovision, but London, Glasgow, Liverpool and Manchester have already thrown their hats into the ring. The bidding process to select the host city will begin this week. The contest is the world's most watched music concert. Martin Osterdahl, who was on the BBC News yesterday, said we are exceptionally grateful that the BBC has accepted blah, blah, blah. Um, what else does it say here? Uh, Bev Craig, the leader of Manchester City Council, has said it should be in Manchester. Leeds City Council Deputy Leader Jonathan Pryor has said Leeds will of course be bidding to host. Um, yeah. But Cardiff, I think I think Cardiff's in with a really good chance, you know. It's never been in Wales, and they've got a huge venue. So we'll see what happens. However, I think it's still between Glasgow and Manchester, the main two. That's it. I, I, I really apologise once again, because this video has been so messy and so rambly. But if you've stuck with me, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, share. It's all appreciated. Do it if you want. Links in the description to my other social media pages, as I said earlier. And I will be back soon with more Eurovision 2023 related news. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. All being well. Bye for now.